we'll start out just kind of talking about the differences between males and females. We can call it battle of the sexes. It really isn't a battle. But the, the major question is, are males and females all that different? And, well, we would say yes. In, in many ways, we are different from each other. But when it comes down to some of our physical characteristics, there, there's definitely an aspect of no, we're not all that different. Uh, the, the basic body plan is not all that different between males and females. And we'll look at that a little bit to start out the uh, lecture today. I will be expecting you to know and understand many of the terms uh, on this slide. It's the basic male anatomy and basic female anatomy when looking at the reproductive systems. Uh, these two can be found respectively in your book on pages 482 and 484. So please uh, do not hesitate to reference those, uh, but if you have downloaded the PowerPoint, you've also got them in your PowerPoint. I will be referencing them uh, throughout the, the three parts of the lecture. When we talk about males and females, we first are going to talk about the similarities between uh, the male and female reproductive systems. Uh, essentially, uh, there are two pouches um, that contain these different types of uh, gonads. Uh, the term gonad is a, a scientific term, uh, meaning uh, the uh, reproductive structures that are going to uh, produce the sperm and uh, the egg in males and females, uh, respectively. Uh, males have two testicles that are pouches that hold uh, and produce sperm, whereas females have two pouches, the ovaries, that hold and produce uh, the eggs. In both cases, these uh, testicles and ovaries do start outside in or start out inside the body. The ovaries stay inside the body throughout a female's life, whereas the testicles uh, will eventually descend just before birth. When the fetus is first starting uh, to develop, it starts out with what we would call uh, starter parts. Uh, and they are not uh, male or female at that point in time. When you look at them, you wouldn't be able to tell the exact gender just by looking at the parts. This is why a female who goes to the doctor looking to see, you know, hey, is this a boy or a girl? In those first couple of weeks, uh, the doctor would not be able to tell. Uh, there is not a penis or a vagina. It's, it's kind of a, a beginning parts that look to be able to develop into either one, but uh, there is this kind of uh, time in the developmental stages around that seventh week of, of development uh, when uh, the, the body's uh, telling the baby uh, using the, the DNA code uh, whether they should become a male or a female. Now, uh, you probably remember some things uh, about uh, X and Y chromosomes when you're talking about genetics. And uh, that certainly would come into play here. We'll talk about that just a, in just a second. But as uh, the, the development is occurring, to become male or female, uh, the unused parts, uh, let's say it's a female that's going to uh, develop a, a vagina, uh, any parts that would look like a, a penis will uh, disintegrate and go away. And the parts that are to be used will continue to develop. Uh, and so the female will, will develop a vagina uh, and uterus and, and the ovaries, uh, just as expected as the DNA kind of has the code for. So, as I mentioned before, how do you know whether you are going to become a male or a female? Uh, we do have to go back and, and, and think a little bit about uh, what it means to be a female, and in this case, uh, to be a female, the sex chromosomes, you have two X's. Two X's tells us that you are going to be a female. And when you go to produce eggs, uh, you are only going to give one of those X's to each egg. So one X whoop, will go down here into an egg, and that egg now has uh, an X chromosome, as stated in the text over here. Now when a male produces sperm, he is XY in his body cells, the cells that are going to develop the sperm. So when he goes to produce these sex cells, we call them gametes, that's the fancy word for sex cell. When he goes to produce these gametes, one of the cells that he produces out of his uh, body cell could uh, produce a sperm that has an X in it, whereas another sperm out of that same DNA could have a Y in it as the X and the Y are split up through uh, the process that divides up the DNA to make sperm and egg. And so depending upon which sperm, the sperm that has the X or the sperm that has the Y, depending on which one fertilizes the egg, uh, that will determine put a little question mark here, Ooh, which one's it going to be, uh, that will determine which uh, type of baby you will have. And so the DNA uh, that the dad donates uh, through his sperm is what determines the baby's gender. 
uh, if it's the X1, uh, then it'll be two X's and it'll be a female. If it's the Y1, it'll be a, an X and a Y and it will be a male. And so it depends upon, like I stated before, which egg and which sperm come together. And this is kind of that the father's big claim to fame. It's the father and the father's DNA through the sperm that determines the baby's gender. If we talk about anatomy, we've had some pictures of male and female anatomy before. There are definite similarities when it comes to having two gonads. There are some tubes that carry um, the gametes from the ovaries to the uterus, from uh, the testicles out of the, the body. There, there are definitely some similarities when it comes to basic body structure, basic body plan when it comes to anatomy. But if we're talking about function of how males and females differ uh, in terms of reproductive functions, they are very different. Um, capitalized voles, very different. Uh, males uh, are relatively uncomplicated. Men are uh, basically uh, sperm factories. Males produce millions of sperm every single day. Uh, and the, the goal is to produce as many sperm as possible to give uh, as many opportunities as possible to fertilize eggs and pass on one's DNA. So, so male's major thing is passing on one DNA through um, a more is better idea. More sperm, better chances. Uh, females take a very different approach to this. It, it's a much more complicated approach to uh, reproduction. And it's more complicated because uh, they're putting all of their efforts into one egg one egg that we are going to put time and effort into. You know, one egg released on average about once per month, uh, trying to coordinate very carefully all the hormones released from the brain, from the uh, ovaries, from the uterus, all these different hormones that are being released are coordinating the efforts that are going on in the body, and, and it really is all this, hey, let's get the perfect timing to make all this stuff happen. Uh, let's be ready to be pregnant, to give our body the best chance to continue a, a, a life inside the body, and continue on the species uh, by passing on the DNA. And so while males are all about um, producing lots of sperm, hoping to fertilize an egg, the female is you know, very uh, much putting all their efforts into that one egg once a month. And so a lot of extra care put into taking care of Well, let's look a, a little bit more closely at females and, and basic female anatomy. I've, I've used the term already, ovary, um, but what does ovary mean? We said it's two po pouches. It's the, the female gonads, and um, I've heard people oftentimes use the term gonad and um, not thinking, oh, that females have gonads as well, but gonad is that generic term uh, used in both males and females. Uh, the ovaries are what contain the uh, ova. Um, the singular would be ovum you've heard that term before, the single ovum, but we're talking about ova, the plural of containing all the eggs that the female is going to have. A uh, female is born with all of her eggs while she is developing inside her own mother. Uh, she is producing inside her ovaries uh, roughly 200,000 uh, eggs per ovary, so two functioning ovaries. She'd have about 400,000 eggs uh, at her disposal as she matures and reaches a, a, a sexual maturity where she's going to start releasing eggs, but all those eggs are waiting to be used uh, inside her ovary um, when she is born. Over the course of uh, a lifetime, she's only going to use up uh, or actually release about 500 of those eggs. Now, not every month is one egg being released. Sometimes it's two eggs being released. But if, uh, let's say, the typical female matures sexually at age 15 and that then uh, lasts, they're releasing an egg about once per month, uh, until the age of 45, until they reach menopause. Uh, we're looking at about 30 years of one's life, 12-ish uh, eggs per month, some or 12-ish eggs per year, uh, one per month, sometimes a few more, sometimes it could be a few less, but you do some math and it gets you close to that number of about 500. So the basic idea is if you've got 400,000 and you're only going to use up about 500, you won't run out. There are some other things that uh, happen uh, in the development of eggs that you will use up uh, a few more than the 400,000. Uh, you get more than one ready per month, but only usually one is released per month. So you do need a few more than the 500, uh, but we won't worry about those details at this time. 
You've probably heard the term ovulation before, certainly a, a term that is going to be necessary as we get into lecture number two talking about the menstrual cycle. Uh, but what is ovulation? Ovulation is when one egg is released from the ovary into uh, something called the oviduct, or maybe you've heard that term uh, fallopian tube more often. So the term oviduct or fallopian tube is where the egg is going to be released into when it leaves the ovary through the process of ovulation. Uh, this is a, a female from a side view, and obviously they've cut away so we can see inside the female. Uh, we've got the ovary up here, so this is what's holding on to uh, the about 200,000 eggs. Not quite fully mature, but they do mature once per month, and then one is released out into the oviduct or the fallopian tube. I do think that they mislabeled slightly here. I think this should be right down here, the oviduct or fallopian tube. So. Ooh, that line right there needs to go a little bit further down uh, so that the egg is released into the oviductor fallopian tube. It then travels, follow my line, down, 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 into uh, the uterus where uh, it will be um, possibly implanting into the uterine lining if it has been properly fertilized. And we'll look at that a little bit more in lecture two. See, I think we've got a slightly different view here. So this is uh, more of a front view. You can see the of the ovary on both sides, um, basic female anatomy. Uh, one or the other will ovulate per month, and so if it's oop, the right side here turned, right side of my picture, uh, that will release the egg, and it'll just be a small little dot that will be released out into the fallopian tube or oviduct, and it will then travel down, down, down towards the uterus where it will be implanted if properly fertilized, or it will exit out of the body through the vagina if it has not been properly fertilized. Uh, after ovulation occurs, uh, a few other things to worry about. Uh, the egg is pushed along by small hair-like structures called cilia. Uh, they encourage the egg to be moved along down the fallopian tube or oviduct um, towards the uterus. And if you've watched uh, Life's Greatest Miracle already, you uh, saw some of the the cilia moving the egg down, and uh, also some of the complications that can go into that, where eggs can get lodged in, into the uh, oviduct uh, or fallopian tubes, and, and things can happen that can go awry if that's the case. But uh, the plan is move those eggs towards the uterus by using this little hair-like structures called the cilia. It usually does take a few days uh, for the egg to travel uh, down into the into the uterus, so that's not a, a one-day sort of event. Once ovulation occurs, a few days uh, of opportunity for that egg to be fertilized as it's traveling towards the uterus. And so as it's moving down that fallopian tube or oviduct here or here, it would take a couple of days before it uh, is down into the uterus waiting to be uh, implanted. Uh, there's another uh, structure inside the female uh, called uh, the cervix. It is the opening between the uterus and the vagina, as stated here. Uh, if we look back at the picture, that opening between the up here uterus with uh, the couple layers of lining and, and the vagina, the opening into the, the female reproductive system, uh, that opening right there between those two structures is uh, called the cervix. Uh, under normal circumstances, that cervix, also found right here on this picture, the cervix is only about uh, a centimeter or less in diameter, so quite small, and uh, it is uh, during child birth during those labor times when that cervix will start to dilate or, or open up larger to about 10 centimeters and then a developing baby up here in the uterus will be ready for childbirth where it goes through the cervix. Uh, head first is by far the most common way to do things uh, and then out through the, the vagina through a natural childbirth process. Uh, so when it comes back to some of the notes we mentioned uh, normally the cervix is tiny less than a uh, centimeter in diameter, but it's at birth when you're going through active labor that the muscles start to pull open the cervix to allow the baby to pass through. And so we call that labor. That's when it's starting to open up and you know, hey, it's getting ready, getting ready, and now it's time to push. Uh, doctors are usually looking for it to be about 10 centimeters in diameter, and then they're talking about the, the pushing process of pushing that, that baby out naturally through the, uh, the birth canal. I am going to pause uh, here for now, and uh, in lecture number two, we will start talking about uh, the female menstrual cycle.